Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would like to share with you some thoughts and comments that I have with regard to one of the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2020. This is a film that is given spy number 1035 from 1985. The filmmaker is L.M. Klimov, and the film is the monumental, powerful work of art, which is called in English, Come and See. This is one of the most powerful war films, I think, ever made. This is one of the most devastating, effective, memorable, unforgettable works of art that I think you will ever see on the subject. The subject, of course, being the, uh, the World War II and the Nazi occupation of uh, uh, Belia Russia and the struggles of the characters as they are encountering many different episodes and situations and horrors of war as they are confronting them. Uh, and at the center of this mesmerizing, powerful, painful, and quite uh, uh, vivid and striking work is the central performance uh, by Alexei Kravchenko. And this, therefore, becomes a work that will never leave you once you have seen it. I must say from the start that you're dealing with a film that is a kind of horror film because it is very disturbing. It is a film that presents the disturbing images in a way that is cinematically effective, that can be both poetic and devastating. There are moments of beauty. There are also moments of, of real intimacy. This film is about childhood, innocence, growing up, and also the threat and total loss of that innocence due to the horrors and the real uh, devastation of war and all that it can, uh, can really show, uh, the, the true depths of that horror and the, the, the true depths and uh, terrible thing that uh, human beings are capable of when they are in these extraordinary circumstances. It is all here in this film. When you see this film, if you're going to watch it for the first time, of course, uh, just be, take note that it is very intense and there are moments that will shake you, that will really shake you. But ultimately, the experience is, I believe, very much worth it because of the artistry of the cinematic craftsmanship involved. Look at the way that sound and images, the, the use of or the reliance on sensory perception to create this, this landscape of uh, a, a wartime, almost apocalyptic view that is also encapsulating moments of beauty and innocence. As I say, it is a film that is also about growing up, about children, about connections, and what it means to have those and what it means to lose those in an utterly devastating way. When you're watching this film for the first time also, take a really good look at how the film deals with close-ups, the face, how the face changes over time and through experience, through the highs and lows of these, these really devastating experiences of war. Notice how the face is depicted. Notice how the close-ups are depicted. Notice how people look straight into the camera at you, the viewers, as though almost crying out for help with their eyes and with their souls. That is the, the, an example of the depth of the power of this film, Come and See. Once again, it is tough. It is 
quite intense. Uh, it is very much a challenging work, but it is incredibly worth it. It is very important. And if you are going to watch a film of power that is about wartime, then I think there is there are very few other films uh, that can uh, uh, arguably top uh, this film, uh, Come and See, in terms of its raw emotional power, in terms of its the way that it captures shocking events, but captures them in a way that still maintains a sense of, of cinematic poetry and dignity, while also maintaining uh, the ever so important aspect of human dignity and respect, while all the while portraying this apocalyptic landscape of war uh, through the eyes of the characters here in this film, Come and See. So what we have here at last, after many years of rumor and speculation and hope, at last we have this film emerging in the Criterion Collection based off what is purported to be materials of a new 2K digital restoration and now presented on this Blu-ray. And we have the front and then the back, as you can see here. And we have the front, which is uh, being adorned by this very memorable and vivid artwork. Uh, and overall, I think it is a, a quite a stellar presentation. Uh, I've never seen, well, I've seen this film a number of times, but I've never seen it in this kind of clear presentation the way that I've seen it through this Criterion release. And it, it just le left me even more stunned and even more um, uh, just uh, shocked and overall affected. So uh, I'm just very pleased with this release now made by the Criterion Collection. And speaking of that, we should also mention that there are a number of splendid supplements along the way uh, going forward. Uh, we have a, an interview with Roger Deakins from 2020, about 10 minutes, uh, and he is not talking as a direct participant of this film, but he is talking as a, an admirer of this film in terms of its look, in terms of the way it is a, a war film and also the camera work, etc. And so this is a, a, a really insightful interview from Roger Deakins. And then we have a, an older interview from 2001. Uh, this is with the director, L.M. Klimov himself, about 20 minutes. He is talking about uh, certain aspects of the preparation of the film, his inspiration, and also uh, his philosophy and outlook and perspective in going into making this film, as well as the production aspects and its legacy. So strongly recommended because, once again, we are getting this perspective directly from the director's own voice. So uh, this is the interview with L.M. Klimov. And then we have another archival interview, again also from 20, uh, 2001, with the, the, uh, the star Alexei Kravchenko, and this is 13 minutes, and he speaks about his experience working on the film, uh, the hardships that were involved in terms of the shoot, because it was a very grueling, involving, demanding process, uh, and yet he really came out of it, of course, giving what is one of the, the most uh, powerful performances ever captured in cinema, um, and so it's it's uh, really wonderful to hear his perspective uh, in this interview from 2001. And then we have another archival interview, also from 2001, with Viktor Petrov, the production designer, uh, Seven Minutes, and he speaks about many aspects of the look of the film, he speaks about many aspects of production values, uh, he also talks about the director of photography, Alexei uh, Rodionov, and how that overall contributed to the, again, the look and the style and design of the work. And then we have a series of short documentary films uh, from 1975 by filmmaker Viktor Dashuk. And this is the uh, series of works called Flaming Memory. And uh, these are a series of five films. For the Criterion release, we have three of those five films, and they are uh, short. Uh, they are 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and 28 minutes, respectively. And so uh, they are, as I say, short films. Uh, one is called Handful of Sand, and the other is called Mute Scream, and the third is called Woman from the Killed Village. And what these are are 
uh, first-hand account interviews with um, uh, with people who are survivors of this uh, the occupation during World War II. And so uh, this is a first-hand accounts from these, uh, from these people uh, that is captured on film. And so what this does is really put into sort of a historical perspective those aspects of the story that we encounter in the film Come and See. In other words, when we listen to these first-hand interview accounts, I think we can identify similarities and aspects of the film itself, which therefore gives further historical background and context to the story, the Klimov film Come and See, which therefore makes, uh, I think, a viewing of these three short documentary works, I think, quite essential. And so it's wonderful to have them included here in the Criterion Collection. And then we have a, a modern uh, interview uh, with uh, German Klimov from 2020. And this is 26 minutes. And German Klimov is speaking about, uh, he's speaking about the production process of the film. He talks about uh, Elam Klimov and uh, the road to ultimately being able to make Come and See. There are some uh, details and anecdotes about uh, uh, Klimov's personal life and the certain tragedies that befell his own personal life leading up to the making of this film, as well as, again, the, philo the philosophy and approach and perspective upon uh, that, was, uh, that was brought to uh, the making of this film, Come and See, uh, as well as other anecdotal information about the, the title and the inspiration for the title and, and things of that nature. So. Uh, again, an essential, essential interview uh, with uh, German Klimov. Again, 2020. This is about 26 minutes. And then we have a, a sort of archival uh, short documentary, which is called The Story of the Film, Come and See, from 1985. This is approximately 10 minutes. Uh, but this is sort of behind-the-scenes footage documentary and interviews. Uh, and it's in fact uh, behind the scenes footage of certain very key and iconic scenes from the film. And so it's an interesting look at the process. And then we do get direct interviews with Elam Klyov and us, uh, Adamovich and Alexei Kravchenko. And so this is, I think, very insightful, uh, very wonderful to have, and again, uh, yet further insight into the background and production and perspective into the making of this film from 1985, 10 minutes. And then there is the re-release trailer, which is about 1 minute and 53 seconds, which uh, it, uh, concludes the supplements included on the Blu-ray disc. And then that's not all because we also have the booklet. And it's nice because it's a stapled booklet. And as you know, I'm a big fan of the robust stapled booklets. And this is uh, a great one because it has uh, two writings uh, that are of great substance. One is called Orphans of the Storm by Marc Le Panu. And this is a, a really good, robust, long essay dealing with Klimov, dealing with the circumstances of of the film industry at the time, dealing with the historical significance of the story, dealing with the road to production, dealing with specific uh, symbolic aspects and nature of the film itself, and other uh, uh, historical background information that I think is quite, uh, quite essential. And that makes the essay really worth reading. So once again, this is called uh, Orphans of the Storm. Uh, but that's not all, because we also have a second essay, which is called Read and See, Alice Adamovich and Literature Out of Fire, by uh, Valgina Mort. And uh, Valgina Mort is a poet, but she is also writing as a kind of expert and admirer of uh, literature. And so uh, the writing is focusing on Adamovich and Adamovich's writing, and also how this is, of course, linked to the ultimate production and making of uh, and the spirit uh, that is being captured and portrayed in a very vivid and uh, quite uh, quite painstaking detail 
in this film, Come and See. And so therefore, this essay uh, becomes a, a very uh, essential look into this kind of, of, uh, of importance, if you will, of the uh, depiction of uh, historical past and how it's portrayed and the, the kinds of uh, issues and the kinds of, of, uh, of uh, uh, circumstances by which this is made possible and successful. And so this is a great essay, again, by uh, Valgina Mort called Read and See, Alice Adamovich and Literature Out of Fire. And so this concludes the overall uh, set or film itself as it is released by Criterion. There is no commentary track. Uh, it would have been nice to have a commentary track. As you know, I'm also a big fan of commentary tracks, but that is still okay because we are still getting a lot of great stuff as it is, uh, as I've tried to describe it here. And we are ultimately also getting this film uh, released by Criterion in this truly breathtaking uh, presentation. And so once again, if you have not seen this film, please uh, just uh, be prepared for an overwhelming, powerful experience. But it is one that I think is unforgettable and one that is uh, very, very important. And so if you're going to watch this film, there's no better place to do so than I think through this release. It is just a, a, a splendid one and I think one of the best this year uh, from Criterion. Uh, and so this is the Criterion release of the very important film from 1985 called Come and See. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much again for your time, my friends. And cheers. Mm -hmm.